Okay, so where we left off, I had made a selection, and then I used um, the feather or the options for the edge. And so then I set those selections, and so you can see how it smooths it out in the selection. I haven't deleted yet, and it's going to feather it a little bit. So as I hit delete, it's going to bite away and smooth and soften, and it gets away. It takes away that little green tinge from the edge. This is very helpful with organic textures, especially things like fur and feathers. And so that's one way using the magic wand and then using select and mask that you can get a pretty clean cutout on your elements. But you don't know which elements you need a clean cutout on quite yet, right? So we need to start assembling. So I'm going to start with the head, and I'm going to start with the eye. You know, what better focal point is there of the head than the eye? So if I if I use the Move tool with Auto Select Layer, I can kind of move the head into place, and this will be the first step on my assembly line, right? And then I think, okay, what do I actually need? Well, I need the top of the head here, the ear. I like all of that. Definitely the eyes. I don't know if I need all of these whiskers. And it's unfortunate that this twig is in the way, but I'm going to use that as kind of a way of defining the edge of the head. So then I'm going to duplicate that out. All right. So kind of another rough cut. Now I'm going to take the opacity down. Why does it keep jumping layers? Let's see. There we go. Take the opacity down on the head so I can line up the eye. There it is. And then I notice my head doesn't need to be this big, so I'm going to transform it, and I'm going to play with scaling it and changing it. I do need to be careful about warping it. But I can do it a little bit, right? Remember that the anatomy needs to stay solid towards your idea. And the first thing I want is that the eye socket and the cranium to make sense. So where the ear is, is pretty important. Right. But then I can push the ear back on this side, right? And get the angle to be the right angle. Now I can push it up to 100% and it shows me, yes, that's the eye action line I want. That's the ear action line I want. It didn't do any favors for the muzzle. And so that's my where I might composite in something different. So let's bring in something different. Aha. An old longhorn. I'm going to steal this muzzle. Get more than I need. Right. Duplicate it. I might steal these horns too while I'm at it. get lots of overlapping texture. I'm going to duplicate this onto a new layer. These might be helpful. I'm going to get rid of that smart layer. Turn off the horns for now. Take this muzzle. Take it at a lower opacity. Around 50%. Transform it. Get it at the right angle. Aha, very nice. Just kind of fits with the jaw and the angle. Bring it up. And now, to help understand how it can all work together, before I start like softening and blending, I'm going to use some of the, the easy compositing tools that we learned in landscape. I'm going to play with its levels. I'm going to brighten its midtones, right? I'm going to play with its color balance because obviously these were photographed in very different conditions. And kind of bring these colors a little bit closer. And then I can do the same thing with the head. I'm going to play with levels. So we're pushing them back and forth. Maybe limit the highlights a tiny bit. 
deep in the shadows. Then play with color balance. We'll get really comfortable with these. Bring in a little bit more of that yellow and that red. And then in the shadows, maybe a little bit more blues. Make sure it's nice and deep. In general, when I do color balance, I don't want to make everything all warm or all cool. I want to have warm highlights and cool shadows. That gives me the most options later on when I composite this creature into different environments. So let's go back to the, the Longhorn, deep in its shadows. And now these two colors, or these two uh, layers are much much better suited to merging together than they were before I did those color adjustments. So let me show you the before, right? So there they just feel like they're from different worlds, but playing with levels and color balance, you can bring them closer together. And now what's the edge that actually matters? Well, it's this edge, of course. So I'm gonna use my tablet and I'm gonna use an eraser and I'm going to use it at 100% opacity with a soft edge because I want to get rid of this hard edge. And I'm going to make it bigger so it starts to blend. And that's why I use a lot of overlap. Right? Okay, so that will work so far. Once I've gotten rid of that hard edge, then I can go to a lower opacity and start worrying about that. What I don't need to do yet is really, really cut this out. I'm going to do a rough cut now, but I don't need to worry about the exact edge quite yet. And I'm fine with this creature having fur, a mix of all these different textures. That can be a lot of fun, but I don't want it to have just every little hair. That's just a lot of extra work and it's not really what I envisioned. So I grabbed it with my lasso. It has a two, a two pixel feather, right? And then if I want to, I can select and mask, use my settings, say, okay. That will help smooth it a little bit and then just delete it a few more times. So now I've got a more unique head, you know, to start working with. I can always reference my sketch for ideas. But I think it's best with a fantasy creature, like the, the red eyes there, the blue in the Pokemon face. There's little details I can still add in. Um, I think it's best if you just don't use a creature's head as is, right? Because then it just becomes, oh, that's like a horse's head on a lion's body, as opposed to your own invention. So I might come back to the head and play with it. I have another big element, of course, to add, which is the stuff on top of the head. So let's bring that in now. And that's this beetle's stuff. <laughs> so before I even bring it in and position it, I know I can clean it up a little bit. Use the magic wand with contiguous turned on. Go ahead and cut that out and see how sharp that is. It's nice to see it on the gray background. All right. And that's pretty clean. It's pretty good. I don't think I need to soften that more. Uh, maybe. Maybe I do. It's got that little glow still. So I'm going to go to Select and Mask. Instead of trying to burn all those edges, right? I just bite into it a little bit more. Delete, delete, delete and it'll take that little glow off. So it's a nice, you know, clear cutout. And then the bottom here, I love all these little spikes and it goes with kind of the aggressive nature of my creature. But I also want to work pretty fast, so I'm going to kind of just cut them out haphazardly here. knowing that I can adjust them later. Okay. 
And remember, you can always alter your selection using any selection tool. So if I want to subtract because I missed this a little bit, I hold down Option and I can select away from it. Delete, select and mask, just hit it once. So softening your, your eraser. All right, notice that there's some green reflection here and I don't want that. So that's where I can use the dodge and burn. In this case, I'm gonna burn it slightly, the mid-tone. Soft edge, I'm gonna burn some of that because I don't want that particular highlight. I can even burn the highlights there, take it down. And now just, I, I guess I don't mind the green so much, but I can take the color down a little bit with the sponge tool and desaturating it. A little hint of color is nice. And then if I really want to round it, I'll burn it at the edge on the mid-tones. So it kind of turns back. So dodge and burn can be used very effectively here as well. Okay, so now I've got my little helmet. Right? <laughs> I'm going to angle it. This is a good reference. I could use this in quite a few ways. I want it kind of over the eye. That's not distorting it at all. So I might make a duplicate. and then use transform to stretch it and make it a little bit uh, more alien looking. Bigger and stranger, I can use warp. So I don't wanna let it get soft looking. All right, so I like how that works, except I don't like how the horn works there. So this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take the horn, and I'm gonna do some internal compositing. So just take this section of it, and I'm gonna hit Command X, which we haven't used before. What Command X does, just like in a Word document, is it deletes it, but then it also puts it onto the clipboard. So if I hit Command X, it's gone, but then I hit Command V, it pastes it into a new layer. So now I have this as a separate layer component that I can angle differently and use to reshape that horn for a different silhouette. And then I can blend the two together because they come from the same source material, they blend very nicely. You can do a tiny bit of burning to extend that shadow up. And then because there's no reason for these to ever be separated again, I'm going to merge them together. So the way you do that is you hold down shift between the two layers and then you can hit command E as the shortcut, but you'll see it here, layer merge layers. So now that that new one is all on one layer. So then I get to decide, well, do I want that one <laughs> or do I want that one, right? I'm thinking, yeah, I kind of like that one more. Now I'm thinking, what about if I use multiple, right? Kind of inspired by my son sketch where he had multiple plates at the back, opening up my JPEG. You know, more than just the one hat. So that's what's great about kind of cleaning up reference. Then you can use it in, in multiple ways. So I can have as a shield there, then I can duplicate that, and I can actually bring it and, and make, you know, a whole series of them if I want to. It's good to, so you, you know,